Welcome back to Buildsum and in this video what I want to show you is how we can develop the bevels for an oblique ended hipped roof using the steel square method. So the advantages of doing it using the steel square is that um, when we develop the bevels geometrically there's a chance that we could get something wrong when we um, transfer those bevels over onto a sliding bevel or whatever whatever we're going to use to actually put the bevels on the timber. So with the steel square, the um, bevels are the bevels are developed directly onto the steel square, so there's no transfer error possible. The disadvantage is it does involve some calculations and some people don't particularly like that. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how the bevels were developed geometrically uh, and then I'll show you how they get transferred onto the steel square. Um, with the steel square, when we work out all our um, calculations, we base it on a roof that has a half span of 500 or half a metre, uh, and whatever our rise or pitch that the roof we're working on needs to be, we have to base it on that. So uh, this has been redrawn from the one I showed you with the geometric bevels to uh, show those um, dimensions. A couple of things we need to be aware of. Uh, we need to know what the uh, the offset angle is, so the angle from here to here, right here, which in this case is 20 degrees. We need to know what the angle from our half span or centering rafter line there to our short hip is, which in this case is 35 degrees, so there to there. Also happens to be the same angle from there to there and also from there to there and from there to there. That'll be referred to as angle 2 and we need to know this one over here, angle 3, which is the angle from here to the long hip and again it's the same angle here and it's the same angle here and here. And for one of the bevels we're actually going to need to know what this angle here is which just happens to be double of angle 2 so in this case it would be 70 degrees. Now because this is a particular roof and it has um, set um, dimensions, I'm not going to go in depth into the calculations of it um, because the chances of you having a roof that has a 20 degree offset angle and a 22 and a half degree rise, you know, it's fairly um, fairly rare. So. If you do, well good on you, lucky, um, you won't have uh, too much to do, but if you don't then you're going to have to go through the steps. I have shown all the calculations as we go through the video, but uh, I'm not going to go through them in depth. If you want to see the calculations you can pause it and uh, have a look at them as we go through. Okay, so let's get started. So as with a normal hip roof, our first two bevels that we developed to our plumb and level bevel for our common rafter. And what we needed was our half span and our rise. So our half span in this case is 500 and our rise we can work out by doing tan and the roof pitch and times in that by our half span. So in this case tan 25 and a half that's our roof pitch times by uh, 500 metres, or sorry, not 500 metres, 500 millimetres gives us uh, a rise of 207. So, come over to our steel square, we can put our rise on the tongue of the um, square, the shorter side of it, and the longer dimension, our half span, goes on the blade, and because they actually both fit, we don't have to reduce them, so they can go straight on there. So that will give us two angles. Now, just a quick note at this early stage, if you follow that line through, it would actually go right through the middle of that button. So that means that when you put it up against the timber, that button is going to hit the timber first, and you won't actually get the right bevel. Now, throughout the video, I'm going to keep the buttons positioned on the actual measurements 
However, what I would recommend doing is on the job site, lay the square on the uh, timber, line the two dimensions up with the edge of the timber, and then slide your buttons along until they touch the timber. They won't be, in every case, on the actual dimension required, but as long as that dimension is lined up with the edge of your timber, then it'll still be accurate. So if you set your buttons up to the exact dimensions, you may not get accurate um, an accurate bevel on your timber. So just be aware of that. However, because I won't be showing the timber in this video, I will be putting the buttons on the actual dimensions that I worked out. So with those two, with the rise and the half span of the roof, I get the plumb and level bevel for the common rafter, as we did for a normal hip roof. So then we came along and we had to do the edge bevel creeper for the long hip. Now when we did it geometrically, we just picked a spot along the hip and drew in a creeper, and we developed that up to get the true length of the creeper. Now what I want to do is do it in full size, so if I was to actually draw that creeper in up here, that would actually give me the half span, and this distance here would be what we've called distance A in previous videos. So to get our edge bevel creeper for the long hip, we need our true length of our rafter and we need distance A. To get the rafter, we simply take our half span and divide it by cos and the roof pitch. To get distance A, we need to take the half our oblique end plus half our offset to get distance A and we've done it in previous videos of how we get our offset and how we work out our oblique end. So that gives us our third bevel, the edge bevel creeper for the long hip. So edge bevel creeper for the short hip, same process except now we're going to be using distance B. So half span, sorry, true length of the rafter and our distance B will give us the edge bevel creeper for the short hip. Again we've done these calculations before so there we go, edge bevel creeper for the short hip. We then move on to our hip bevels themselves. So when we did uh, it geometrically, we just used the rise and the plan length of the hip. Now there's two ways we could work out the plan length of the hip. We could either use distance A and the uh, plan length of the rafter or the half span and work it out using Pythagoras. Or we could use this distance here, the half span, and what we've called angle 3. And using cos, we can actually work out what that length there is. So we need plan length of the long hip and the rise. So plan length for the long hip. So we can work it out using cos, the rise on the tongue, plan length long hip on the blade, it gives us our angle, and gives us our plumb and level bevel for our long hip. We then need to get our edge bevel for our long hip. Now when we did it um, geometrically, again, we picked a spot along the plan length here somewhere, square that off, until we hit our crown end rafter, transfer that up, gave us that shape. If we blow it out to full size, what we actually end up with is we need to get our triangle here, we need the true length of the long hip, which is this line here, and we need to know what this level line 2 is. So the way we can work out level line 2 is we already know what our plan length of our long hip is, because we just worked it out in the last bevel. We know what this angle in here is, it's angle 3. So we can use that and tan 
to get level line two's length and we just transfer that over to there. So we need the true length of the long hip and we need level line two. So there's the calculations. True length of the long hip works out to be the shortest dimension. Now see what we had to do here and I didn't mention it in the last couple. If the dimension's too big to actually fit on the square we need to reduce it and we have to reduce each side evenly. So in this case uh, if I had to reduce that um, once it wouldn't have fitted um, so I've had to reduce it to, um, down I'll divide it by 3 and we get both dimensions to fit onto the square. So whatever we reduce one side by we always have to do the other to keep the triangle in proportion. So there's um, bevel 7, the edge bevel for the long hip. So now we repeat the process for the short hip. So we flip over, we need the rise and the true length, sorry, the plan length of the short hip. And we have our uh, angle 2. So we can actually work out what the plan length of the short hip is. Again, using our cosine half span. In this case, we ended up with six, uh, 610, which would not have fitted on our square. They're only 600 long. So we had to, only just going to miss, but we had to reduce it by half. So we reduce this side down. And even though this side would have fitted, we had to reduce it by half again. So they both fit on and give us our bevels. Then we go back and do our edge bevel. Again, stretching this out to full size, we need the true length of the short hip and level line 1. So to work out level line 1, we use our angle 2. Tan angle 2 will give us level line 1. So true length of short hip. Level line 1 on here. And that gives us the edge bevel for our short hip. So now our hips are dealt with. The next one we looked at was our crown end rafter. Now what we actually did originally was we just came square off our crown end rafter out to here. Um, we then transferred the length from here to here around, developed that up, took this length here, developed it up there, transferred it down, got our bevel up here. So to blow that out to full size, um, if I had come all the way down and then developed that out till it hit this point, I end up with quite a large line here, we end up with this distance here, which is our half span. Okay, or, sorry, it's going to be can't become our true length of our rafter. To work out this distance, I actually need this entire angle here, which we originally had um, 35 for half of it, so it's going to be 70 degrees. So 10, 70 will give us the length of level line 2. So rafter on the tongue, level line 3 on the blade and gives us our edge bevel for our crown end rafter. Okay. I then had to do our pearl and bevels. Now, when we worked out our pearl and bevels originally, what we did was we drew this line in here at 90 degrees to our rafter. So to bring that out to full size, instead of having it in here, over here I've drawn it full size and extended this point, the apex down, and produced what we call the face line purlin. 
Now, the face line Perlin and distance A for our long hip will give us um, bevel 12, or will give us our face bevel Perlin for the long hip. And a similar process on the other side will give us, uh, except using distance B, will give us our face bevel Perlin for our short hip. So, to work out the face bevel Perlin line, what we need is the roof pitch, which is this angle in here. So tan uh, roof pitch times by our true length of our rafter will give us this length here. And distance A we've already worked out. So distance A, baseline purlin, uh, rafter length divided by, sorry, divided by cos. Uh, roof pitch will give us our dimension for our face line purlin. So since A reduced down by three, face line purlin reduced down by three will give us our angle. And that gives us our bevel for our face bevel purlin for the long hip. Edge bevel purlin is going to be a lot easier because we've already done all the work. As before, it's just the opposite of our edge bevel creeper for our long hip. So all we have to do is go back to uh, where we had bevel 3, our edge bevel creeper for the long hip, and it's the uh, opposite bevel. will give us 13. That's an easy one. Now we move over to the short hip. So as before, for the short hip we need our face line purlin, and we need, in this case, distance B. So we go back. So distance, sorry, that should be distance B. Make a quick change. So what you get for cutting and pasting. Um, distance B and our face line purlin will give us our face bevel purlin for the short hip. And then again, when we did uh, our edge bevel creeper for the short hip, we've already worked out our edge bevel purlin for the short hip. So again, we go back to bevel 4. And it's the opposite of bevel four. So, in summary, to work out our plumb and level bevel common rafter, we need to know our rise and our half span. Remember, we're basing everything on a half span of half a meter. To work out our edge bevel creeper for our long hip and our edge bevel purlin for our long hip, we need to know our true length of our rafter and distance A. To work out our edge bevel creeper for our short hip and our edge bevel purlin for our short hip, we need to know the true length of our rafter and distance B. To work out our plumb and level bevel for our long hip, we need to know our rise and our plan length of our long hip. To work out the edge bevel for our long hip, we need to know the true length of our long hip and level line two. For our short hip, we need to know, or well, plumb and level bevel for our short hip, we need to know the rise of our short hip and the plan length of our short hip. Uh, 10. Our edge bevel short hip, we need the true length of the short hip and level line 1. For our edge bevel crown end rafter, we need to know our true length of our rafter and our level line 3. For our face bevel purlin, we need to know distance A and our face line purlin length. And the last one for our 
face line purlin for the short hip, we need to do distance B and our face line purlin. So there you go, there are all the dimensions you need to work out all the bevels for an oblique ended hip roof using the steel square method.